Yesterday, I raised some questions about the role of the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer. I made the point that when he was boss, when he was director of public prosecutions, was at the time when hundreds of private prosecutions from the post office were going through against innocent men and women. And I asked a question, why did he not play a role? It was really funny, because the sort of Twitterati and the media class all immediately attacked me, saying I was wrong. But actually, as we showed last night, the legislation was clear that the Director of Public Prosecutions can intervene and stop what he thinks may be vexatious or wrong prosecutions. And I was pleased to see some good newspaper coverage today. But tonight, my question to you is about Sir Ed Davey. They're all sirs. It's funny, isn't it? Ed Davey, there he was. From 2010 to 2012, he was the minister responsible for post offices. That was at the time when the first really big wave of convictions took place. And yes, Mr Bates of ITV fame wrote to Davy no fewer than five times. But it was a story that was revealed by our GB News colleague Andrew Pearce, and he wrote it in the Daily Mail that really interested me. He said this, in 2017, 500 postmasters teamed up to launch a group litigation against the post office which responded in turn in 2019 by hiring attack dog lawyers of the blue chip city firm Herbert Smith Freehills HSF to fight its corner. And this is where Davey makes his second appearance in the scandal. The Daily Mail can disclose that in the very same year the group action was launched, five years after Davey had behaved so shamely as a minister, he was himself hired by HSF. Now, I'm not sure whether Andrew Pearce has got the timelines exactly right, but what is clear is that Ed Davey was being paid £5,000 a month by HSF. Now, he'll say it's for political advice, but the very same firm that the post office were hiring to try and stop 500 postmasters from overturning their guilty verdicts. I have to say that from Ed Davey, this at the very best is a gross error of judgment. To have been paid £275,000 by the very firm that was trying to stop justice being done, to the postmasters and postmistresses when he'd been the minister responsible during the peak of it, was a grave error of judgment. So can Ed Davey survive as leader of the Liberal Democrats? Give me your thoughts, farage at gbnews.com. I don't think he can. I think the pressure upon him is going to become simply intolerable. It will be a massive <coughs> distraction from everything the Lib Dems try to do. And let's face it, under his leadership, they're doing pretty poorly anyway. Richard Tice, leader of reform, his party now consistently above the Liberal Democrats in the polls. Now, it's been a day of, again, <coughs> huge news over this horizon sub-postmaster and mistress scandal, and I'm joined by our political editor, Chris Hope, to go through it. So yesterday, Chris, we were debating on the show, should there be a blanket exemption? Uh, and I made the point that I'm generally not for these things, but for once, I think, given the passage of time and the age of many involved, perhaps it should happen. Some indications this afternoon, this may well happen. That's right. There's been some concern, there's always a concern in government, about giving blanket uh, mm. uh, uh, pardons, if you like, yeah. uh, to, to use a kind, of, uh, a, a, a kind of slang term about it. But they're looking, the government, as I understand it, at a bill to, that could lead to annulling these convictions of around 700 sub-postmasters. We could see detail of that legislation as soon as tomorrow or Thursday. Um, I think the government is desperate to get ahead of this escalating scandal. Now, I've obviously, before I came here, I worked at The Telegraph, I've written a lot about it elsewhere, MPs have raised it, and we've all been talking about it. It's mm. been ready for documentaries. It took, I think, this uh, documentary, which put the viewer in the mind, the eye of, of one of the sub-postmasters, to, court, to, 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 raise, to show how unfair it is. I mean, for me, there's been a failure, I think, 
of the political class, of official civil servants, to listen to people. They've trusted computers over mm. people. Not just any old people, but people who, sub-postmasters, who have a leadership role in their communities. Pillars of Pillars, the local yeah. community. And so it's really, really politically dangerous because these people have got votes. We're seeing 1.2 million people mm. calling for Paula Venels to lose her, her CBE. Yeah. Now, she's announced at lunchtime today that she'll hand it back. She's still got it, Nigel. But you can't give it on her back, no, can I, you? I, I, no, with all the, all, the, all, the, all the honours you've got, of course. Oh, well, I've got nothing, no worry no, about they, that. They, they won't but, give you one, but... But, but, they, but this point's important to explain important. to people so, so, that so, when you've been made the CBE, that's been approved by the monarch. Yeah, that's it. And the only person that can remove that CBE Correct. from the former CEO of the post office, Paula Bennells, is actually on advice, the King himself. The Honours Forfeiture Committee, to use a term which we'll never yes. say again on GB News, but yes. that is the committee which looks at it. Even number 10, I've been in briefings today with Downing Street with the PM spokesman. Why won't the PM force them to take on board? He can't even call, set the agenda yeah. for this committee. So they the, must do it. So and, the, and until they, they take action, forgive me, that CBA stays in place. So they can make a recommendation, but ultimately the King has to agree. Correct, and the King will agree, but we'll, only, we'll on, agree. only on advice. Yeah, no, no, and it's chaired absolutely. by Sir Chris Wormald, the, the uh, lead official in the Department of Health. Now, this could be a big opportunity tomorrow for the Prime Minister. I'll come to that in a second. But another big day in Westminster tomorrow. Firstly, Rwanda. Yes, we've had the, got the dates. Uh, an un unusual statement today from the Leader of the House of Commons, Penny Mordaunt, setting out next Tuesday and Wednesday next week when the Committee of the Whole House, that's all MPs on the yep. floor of the House, will debate line by line the, R the Rwanda bill. That's, and the reason why they're announcing it so soon is because I think they want to buy time to see what the rebels might try and do mm. to make it stronger, to make it, to make it, to, uh, the PM yesterday in Accrington Stanley said he wants to see bright ideas. Well, he's looked, these bright ideas may emerge in the next 12 hours. And the first PMQs of the year, big chance for Sunak if he makes a big statement on the sub-postmasters, given huge questions around Ed Davey and some questions around Keir Starmer. Big chance for him. And a new departure for GB News tomorrow. That's right, we're launching a new GB, uh, PMQs Live, a show with Gloria De Piero, former Labour MP and, of course, a presenter on GB yep. News. We're going to be dealing with the with uh, PMQs in a, in a lively way, Take, try and get people involved, send in your questions you want answering. We'll get our guests in the studio, Labour, Tory, maybe some Lib Dem MPs, to answer them for you. Perfect. Join us live on GB News tomorrow. Midday. It'll be our first Westminster-based PMQ's show. Chris Hope, thank you very much indeed. Well, let's get back to this question of Starmer, Keir Starmer. And I, I raised this yesterday, I was shouted down, but earlier on today, but Justice Minister Mike Freer in the House of Commons confirmed that I was right. Can the Secretary of State confirm that the Director of Public Prosecutions could take over a private prosec prosecution and discontinue it? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Crown Prosecution Service can take over any criminal prosecution and may then carry out the prosecution. It may end or discontinue the prosecution if it does not believe that it should have been brought in the first place. Well, I'm joined down the line by Paul Garlick, KC, retired criminal barrister and judge. And, and, and Paul, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not accusing Keir Starmer of anything. I'm really not. But I am raising a question. You know, we have a Crown Prosecution Service, we have a Director of Public Prosecutions. Under the legislation, you know, firms like the Post Office can take their own private prosecutions. Given there were hundreds of them, shouldn't, in some way, the DPP have intervened? Well, Nigel, first of all, Happy New Year. And uh, New Year. I think you have a good point. There's a little bit more subtlety to it than your introduction there, because, in fact, these weren't actually private prosecutions. The post office has a statutory power as a, as a public body to bring prosecutions. That makes it slightly different to, to you and I going to a magistrate's court and trying to get a summons for someone who's punched us in the pub or something like that over a pint of beer. So the post office has a statutory right to bring prosecutions. Now, where... Your, I mean, obviously, the minister today in the House of Commons is quite right. The director of public prosecution, the DPP, has the right to take over any prosecution and to review it. 
But where the prosecution is not a purely private prosecution, it's one that's brought by a body like the post office that has prosecuting powers, it's more difficult, it's more sensitive. And there's a specific convention that has to be adhered with before the DPP will take over the case. Now, the difficulty with these sort of cases where you've got computer-generated evidence is notorious. I've defended in many cases where the, the, the prosecution case has been entirely computer-generated evidence. And when you're defending, particularly if you're just a sub-postmaster, you've got no great funds, you can't afford experts to take apart the evidence. And I've been in cases involving private prosecutions by Saudi Arabia where we spent literally tens of thousands of pounds on experts to prove that the evidence was discredited. Mm. These poor post offices the post offices did not have that fund. Yeah. Now, the difficulty is the director at the time probably didn't know, and I think that's, and that is probably right, did not know about the, the fundamental flaws in this evidence. So there was probably not enough to cause him or her, him in this case, obviously Keir Starmer, at the time to intervene and take over the case. Plainly, if there had been an indication that that computer-generated evidence was faulty, it was disrupted, it was unreliable, then the director should have intervened, taken over the case, reviewed well, it. That may be a fair point, Paul, but remember, if we go back to those years of 2010 to 2013, this was in the news and there were hundreds of people. But, I mean, you know, we can argue that. But, Paul, I just want to get one big thought from you, if I can. Yeah, this is being course. described, this is being talked about as the greatest miscarriage of justice ever seen in this country. Now, whether that's true or not, clearly there is a grave injustice. Are yeah. blanket pardons the right way to deal with this? My, my professional judgment is that no, they're not. But there has to be an adequate remedy. There has to be, what they should do is draft in maybe a dozen new High Court judges specifically for this job to review every prosecution. Because to give a blanket um, um, pardoning is, is not as satisfactory as the Court of Appeal saying in individual cases, your case was badly brought, there was an insufficient evidence, you were unjustly convicted. So what I think we should do is have, as I say, a, a specialist panel now of High Court judges brought in okay. specifically to deal with this. Well, either way, whether it's a blanket pardon, whether it's a dozen High Court judges being brought in, whatever happens needs to happen pretty quickly, given the ages of some of those who've been wronged. Paul Garlick, Casey, thank you once again for joining us on the programme.